Hello everyone, today's video is just a, a quick update on the progress on this John Deere 9560R. Now this, I'd have to say, is the model I would advise getting if you're uh, building your first RC tractor. It's it's much much simpler than any of the other designs that I've had to or that I've built so far. Um, the main reason for this is obviously the size. This tractor is absolutely massive, which means when we take off the bonnet, we have a huge amount of space in here for electronics. So uh, I'll just update you on what I have so far. Um, take a look under the tractor here. You can see I have a servo arm coming out here. I have the servo mounted. You can see those two screws there. That's where I have the, the servo mounted inside the body. And um, this servo arm comes out. I have a temporary, uh, just a little beam here to connect the, and I'm going to connect the bar between the servo arm and here, just to test the steering. Uh, I have done that already, and uh, it works very well. Um, as well as that, I have the motor built in here. Uh, along, it's it's connected to these two wheels are connected to the shaft of the motor, this one and this one, and uh, these two are freewheeling. Uh, all the rear wheels are freewheeling. I was thinking of putting a, a second motor in the back, but um, th with the size of it, I think I just ruined the model by trying to squeeze one in. It wouldn't it wouldn't look great, and there's plenty of power from this motor. Uh, the motor I'm using. It's uh, one of these Tamiya motors. It's a uh, what's the number? There it is. Tamiya seventy one eight nine. That's the motor that I'm using. It's uh, a four speed motor. You can change the speed. I'm using the second lowest speed for this tractor because um, just as uh, plenty of pulling power when it's in that gear ratio, just perfect for this for this application. Um, what else now? Yep, the the XB, the little RC receiver or transceiver. I've just drilled a hole through the bonnet, and I'm going to mount that in the in the top of the bonnet here. So it just look like that. It doesn't look too bad. Um, uh, previously in the fent and the Massey, there was no room for it anywhere in the body, so I've had wires coming into the cab, and it didn't look great. It wasn't the best. But um, that's what I had to do because of the space constraints, which is why I'm saying if, if this is your first RC tractor that you're trying to build, I'd really advise uh, buying this model. It, it is about 10 euros more expensive, but it is much, much easier to build into an RC tractor than, uh, than many of the smaller models would be. Uh, have a look here. Here's the LEDs uh, for the headlights. I've decided to put six uh, three millimeter bright white LEDs in here. Uh, with all the resistors, there's, there's loads of room for them again in the in the bonnet. So there should be plenty of light out of there. I've also decided to put two green LEDs in there, and uh, um, what I intend to do is cut this front off the engine and mount it in there, and hopefully with the green LEDs coming down there, that might look pretty cool, but I haven't tested that yet, so I'll have to see how that turns out. Um, just while I'm talking about cutting part of the engine, uh, I don't think I've shown this in any of the other videos, but this, uh, in, the, in the CQ models, the engine hinges about uh, this die cast point here, to this kind of a hinge section on the bonnet itself and this plastic uh, piece here so it moves kind of like that now what I've done with the Fent and uh, the Massey is I've cut away the, this section out of the bonnet here and cut it down nice and tight here so that I just have the piece that I need for this screwed it up which has left all the space in just all this space in under here, all that free. 
um, and thrown away the rest of the engine because I didn't need it. But on this tractor, if you can see here, there's a cut away. So I had to leave slightly more of this um, piece of engine uh, visible from the outside of the tractor, or um, you know, it would have had a big, a big empty space here and would have been very obvious from this side and as well as that there's a hole here for mounting this uh, exhaust there's a bar here uh, this here and it um, it just uh, pops into this hole here and it holds that on solid so it won't be wobbling around when you're uh, driving along so that's another point uh, I don't think I mentioned that on the Fenter or any of the other ones but uh, the the Massey, uh, it the engine was slit away here, so you kind of you were forced to leave the engine in, or it would have looked ridiculous. Whereas the Fent was a good choice because its engine came straight down here, or its bonnet, I mean, came straight down here, so none of the engine was exposed, and you could just cut away the engine. So uh, that's that's one of the tricks that you'd have to do when you're building these. Um, I think I think that might be all I have. Oh, that's the actual. Uh, I've started making the controller board. I intend to sit that in here, just in the front of the, under the under the bonnet here, because like I'm saying, there's so much space on this model. It's much better than the the Fent uh, or the Massey uh, space-wise, but it is much much larger than either of those models. But um, I'm able to fit this control board in here. And then I plan to use two of these uh, 240 milliamp hour 3.7 volt batteries, which I can sit just in here under the control board. Do them like that. Bring the wire around, plug it into the this controller board, and I should be able to have batteries and everything contained inside the tractor. Whereas uh, previously with the Fent and the Massey, there wasn't enough room to do that. Um, you know, you, you had to put them in accessories like the mowers or the trailers. So, you should be able to fit batteries into this tractor. Just yet again, another reason why this is a very good model if you want to choose it for your first tractor. Um, another thing I had thought about doing was uh, making the hitch, putting a servo in to move the hitch. But I've kind of gone off the idea because. Even if I do go to the trouble of finding space for a servo in there, um, you know, uh, you hook up the trailer, but then you have to go and plug the wires in for the lights and everything that you've that you've done anyway. So it kind of makes it a little bit pointless uh, uh, having a servo in there. You can't hook up to mowers or anything. All you can do is hitch to a trailer. So it's a lot of trouble for something that's not really very beneficial. So I think I'm just going to leave the hitch as normal uh, and and uh, concentrate on getting the signal wires for servos and the LEDs in the trailer so that they match what's happening on the tractor. So if the indicator is on on the tractor, it'll be on on the trailer, that kind of thing. I think that's more important than just being able to hitch to the trailer when you have to then go and plug in the wires anyway. So, But uh, for those of you who might be more more interested in that. Um, if you look down here, I, I was able to screw a 3mm screw or an M3 screw in either side of the hitch here. So, if and that, that keeps it in the upright position so that this is freely moving. Then, once you have that done, uh, if you mount your servo inside your tractor, you should be able to run a cable to it to just a cable to attach up here pull it up and down, if you know what I mean, and um, that should give you a, a hitching motion. Okay, well, um, I think that's all I have for this video, so um, if you have any questions, post them in the forum, or if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to do more of these videos. So, um, thanks for watching.